Hello, my name is Shelly and welcome back to my channel. I'm actually on time for once. Ish. This is my April wrap up. One, two, three, let's go! So I read 11 books in April. Thumbs up because that was better than last month. So let's just get right into it and start off with my rereads for this month. I read the fourth book in the Mediate series, which is The Darkest Hour, or just Darkest Hour, <laughs> by Med Cabot. So in short, main character talks to ghosts. Moving on! <laughs> so I also read book two and three in The Kane Chronicles by Rick Ryden. So we have the throne of fire and we have the th the serpent's shadow king chronicles egyptian mythology rick ryden is king of mythology we'll talk about them another time yeah. so for new books well new to me books i read Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So this is basically a romantic space opera told through a collection of interview transcripts, diary entries and emails and so on and so forth. So there is also like a lot of graphics. Uh, you get like... Can you see that? Not really. So there's a lot of graphics throughout, um, like, so, what is that, spaceship, something, so good at this, obviously. <laughs> so it's a very unique way of storytelling and it's a lot of fun and you don't, you don't really know what's coming from page to page, so that's great. However, it does make it a lot harder to get into the book, get into the story. At least it was for me. But once I sort of got through it, and I mean, I did have to push myself a bit to get into the book, to keep reading the book, because yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it was hard to start. Yeah, it was hard to start. <laughs> but once I got into the book, I found myself, you know, riveted by the whole story that was going on, all the action. I, I mean, I do have a lot of questions, like, how many spaceships were there actually because i don't really i didn't really get that part of it so if uh, anyone can tell me that comment please because i was kind of confused about that part anyway all in all i did kind of enjoy it and I'm definitely curious to see where the other two books will take us. I don't think I will pick either of the sequels up anytime soon, but I do want to try and finish them off this year, so fingers crossed. So this next book is a very hyped up book, or hyped up series, or hyped up world. And it is coming to Netflix very soon. <laughs> I'm so cheesy. Uh, it is, of course, Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Yes, I have finally picked this series up. So something I didn't know going into this book, but I sort of heard after, was that it's apparently based on Russian folklore and mythology, which... I can't say if that's true or not because I know nothing about Russian folklore or mythology. So, yeah. However, it did get me intrigued into looking into that in the future. So, we follow this orphan girl called Alina and she's 
like in <laughs> she's a soldier she's in the middle of a war she's well she's a map maker in the middle of a war so I'm not sure how much fighting they do but what they do actually make maps of war I don't know however she thinks she's a normal orphan girl who's just part of a war somehow uh, but one day she finds out she actually has some powers on her or in her one of the two and having power means she's a Grisha is that what it's called? I don't know I'm so bad at pronunciations but let's let's ignore that for for a bit so being a Grisha basically means that she gets taken into this new world where she's basically going to be trained how to use her power and it turns out her power is very special of course it is of course she has a special power because yeah it wouldn't be a story if she wasn't special was it would it oh well so she's going from this war poverty world into like lavishness and parties and fanciness all while she's trying to figure out this new side of her how she's supposed to exist in this new world because it is a new world to her so i don't know how lena as a character is moving forward in the other books because i've just read this one so far however in this one she feels very insecure and i did have a hard time to relate to the choices she makes and how and why she makes these choices she's kind of a weak female protagonist there isn't a lot of character depth in this book I'm hoping that will come in the other books that will get get to know them a bit more get to see them grow or something that this was just a book one where where the world is set basically so we shall see or I shall see well you'll hear about it so I guess you'll see too I will say this though the darkling the Darkling intrigues me. I'm fascinated by this character. I want to know more. Yeah. Who is he? What is he? What does he want? I am very happy that I picked this series up or picked up Lee Bardugo's books in general. So, yes, excited for the next installment, which. I don't know when I'll read that one, but soon I think. It's very easy to read, so yeah. We like an easy read, don't we? Yes, we do. Next up is another new book. Uh, surprise, surprise. So we have, it's, <laughs> we have A Legend by Marie Lou. So it's set in a dystopian United States where it's divided into the Republic and the colonies. And of course, they are at war with each other. That's just the way these kinds of worlds work, isn't it? So we follow June and Day and they are from completely different worlds. And they really have no reason to meet except they do <laughs> so while june is looking for her brother's killer day is fighting for his family's survival lots of stuff takes place and they end up working together so it's a very fast pace but it's a easy read all in one go perfect i would say that the romance in it is a bit rushed I mean, even Day says that they don't really know each other. 
but all of a sudden they love each other. How does that work? You don't know each other, but you love each other. Ooh, 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 I don't know what I'm doing. So it's not very noticeable on camera, but it did make my eyes go, ooh, 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 ooh. whatever that means in terms of words. So June's chapters are completely normal, like that. And then we have day's chapters, which to the naked eye or camera eye looks completely normal but it's i think it's like gold color or something you can see here the end of june's chapter which is black and then it shifts into day's chapter which is a completely different color uh, and also a bit bolder other than that really enjoyed it so shall be reading the other one soon so next up we have a standalone and it's into the spotlight by carrie hope fletcher now carrie hope fletcher usually writes what i think it's classed as women's fiction with ch it's chiclet let's just call it that but i i'm not sure i would actually put it under that category either because they feel more like a bit of fantasy YA more than women's fiction but I mean I don't categorize books so yeah so anyway this is her first middle grade book and she did a good job <laughs> I really like this one um, so this book is oh too close so this book is inspired by the classic ballet shoes by noel stretfield i haven't read that one but i am very curious to read it now after having read this one so even though i haven't read the original one in uh, this one it sort of feels like the original story is entwined somehow in this one does that make sense? I would say it's like a completely new story in the world of ballet shoes. Brilliant Aunt Maud visits seasides the world over and has become quite the pebble collector. Pebbles of all shapes, sizes and colours and even one that looked like Elvis Presley if you squinted a bit. Her favourite pebbles however are Marigold, Mabel and Morris. One by one and by strange and unusual ways each child arrives at the stage door of brilliant Aunt Maud's theatre in the heart of London, home to an extraordinary cast of performers. I won't read the rest of it because I think I did that in my haul of it. So we followed these three orphans as they are trying to find their little place in the world, as they find a mystery and try to solve that mystery, as well as trying to save the theatre that they call home. So there's a lot going on in here. It was a lovely, lovely read. I really liked it. So moving on to the book I have no recollection of ordering but it showed up anyway and then I just sort of claimed it and while it was just sitting there I thought I'll just pick it up and read it and have it be done with more or less. It was uh, The Ichabod by J.K. Rowling. So once upon a time there was this tiny little kingdom called Cornucopia and it was the perfect fairy tale kind of kingdom. So as in any fairy tale, legend tells of a creature, a fearful monster living far to the north. So because there's a monster, of course there has to be an expedition that's supposed to go kill the monster. It doesn't really go to plan. So, of course, this myth takes a life on its own and eventually misery and destruction ensues. As a children's book, as a rather thick children's book, it's a very easy read. I did find myself quite enjoying it as well. Uh, it was very 
I felt very involved with what was going on and I really wanted to bonk some of the characters on their heads because they were, well, they were dickheads. So this book was first released one chapter at a time during the first lockdown of 2020 and it was all free. We like free stuff. I don't think this book is free though. <laughs> And later they held competition and uh, lots of kids entered from around the world uh, and the winners actually got their drawings featured in this book. So there's a lot of, lot of different kinds of drawings throughout the book. made by children <laughs> I mean they're not really my cup of tea kind of drawings but I do appreciate that all these kids got featured in in a book I mean that's pretty epic for a kid I would have loved that when I was a kid so this is a story for kids slightly younger than the Harry Potter age group bracket but it's quite grim <laughs> there is quite a lot of bloodiness going on in this book so I I would question what we teach what we read to young children but um, as a grown-ass adult I don't mind it but I'm not sure I would read it to uh, kids. So the last book of this, <laughs> I almost said this year's wrap up, but of the April wrap up, because it's just a month worse. It's not the whole year, not yet. We're only in April. We have Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I'll say this before I get into the book. Apparently a lot of people are comparing it to The Midnight Circus and they're saying that Caraval is basically a ripoff of that. I haven't read Midnight Circus. I would like to read it eventually. I haven't got it yet, but eventually. So I can't say if it's a ripoff or not. I would say that if you're going to judge book by the similar content and say this is a ripoff of that one, basically all books are ripoffs of each other then. So in this book we follow Scarlett and Scarlett has never left the tiny island that she and her sister Tella grew up on. So where we start off, Scarlett is set to get married, a marriage that has been arranged by her father. Even though it's an arranged marriage, Stella still sees this as a way to get away from her father, to save herself and her sister. But then one day, a long dreamt of invitation to Caraval finally arrives. But Scarlet is so intent on getting married that she decides not to go. So with the help of a mysterious stranger, Tella whisks her sister away to the show. Only as soon as they arrive, Teller is of course kidnapped by the show's mastermind organiser, Legend. <laughs> so now it turns out that this season Caraval revolts around Teller and whoever finds her is the winner. So Scarlet has been told that everything that happens during Caraval is just an elaborate performance. So the further along into the games that Scarlet gets, more and more she questions what's real and what's not. And she starts to wonder if her sister's life is actually properly in danger. So I really like this one. It's so unlike other stories that I've read. I mean, having mentioned the Midnight Circus earlier, I, I can't compare the two because I just don't know but even if they are similar and Caraval is a ripoff of Minnow Circus 
does it really matter but Scarlet does come off quite a lot as a damsel in distress which I'm not really a fan of the main character being this la -di da not clever female person so she comes off as this damsel in distress while simultaneously supposed to be like this strong heroine kind of a character so it's a bit misleading and it gets a little confusing here and there but other than that so i will say this if you didn't really enjoy the story uh i wouldn't read the epilogue because the epilogue sets up what's to come in book number two i'm guessing <laughs> i haven't read book number two yet but that's the feel i'm getting from it so if you just want a standalone uh i would read it up until the epilogue and just quit there and because it's sort of like finishes off the book and you don't really need more after it even though you may get a lot of questions that remain unanswered throughout this book number one uh i didn't feel like i needed to actually know the answers to them it's the way it's rounded off it does feel like you could just quit there and be done but we shall see we shall see what book number two and three has in store because i don't know yet so that was another crap wrap up i'm gonna continue with this crap wrap up that is now my thing so as always please remember to like comment and subscribe uh because it really helps me out until next time take care um, boy.